What's going on guys? Today, I want to talk to you about Pro-Q3 from FabFilter. If you're looking for a lot of information on Pro-Q3 or just a cool place to go pick it up, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go to the Warp Academy site. But today, I want to talk about some power user tips. Specifically, auto gain and the tilt function. All right guys, let's get into it. All right, guys, today we're gonna to be getting into FabFilter's Pro-Q3. So this isn't gonna be a full-on explanation of every feature that Pro-Q3 does. Instead, I'm gonna talk about hidden Pro user tips. So first off, just so we can get on the same page, we're gonna talk about what is Pro-Q3 and how is it different from Pro-Q2, their previous release. We're gonna get into what is dynamic EQ and how is it different than regular EQ. We're gonna talk about Pro-Q3's tilt function, what it is, why it's important. We're gonna talk about pink noise, talk about what that is and how that's important to the tilt function. And then we're gonna wrap it up by talking about Pro Q3's auto gain function, what that does and how it's useful. All right, let's get into it. Watch, 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 watch me drop it. So what is Pro-Q3? Well, since 2009, FabFilter's Pro-Q has become one of the most popular EQs in many, many producers and engineer studios. Pro-Q3 maintains the same clean and intelligent design of Pro-Q2, plus several new welcome additions. With a whole laundry list of new features, we're not gonna be able to cover them all. But let's talk about the standout main difference. So one of the most important new features in Pro-Q3 is dynamic EQ. And this means that any of Pro-Q's bands with bell or shell shapes can be made dynamic and any slope with perfect analog matching and in linear phase mode. So what is dynamic EQ? How's that different from regular EQ? Simply put, dynamic EQ changes the gain of an EQ band dynamically, depending on the level of the input signal. This makes it possible to perform subtle and surgical edits similar to a multiband compressor, but in a way that's more often intuitive and easier to work with. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so in the example that I let you guys hear just a second ago, we've got a lot of instruments going on. I noticed that the hi-hats are sort of competing with my lead, right? So I've got my lead right here. And if you listen to the frequencies, you could hear that the hi-hats are sort of competing with that. A little bit, right, in that upper register. So how could we take care of this? We could just notch out some of that EQ, right? Go to the hi-hats, find the frequency that they're competing or masking each other, and then notch it out. But then we'd lose that energy in the hi-hats all the time. So check this out. I have a Pro-Q3 here on my lead, and what's really cool is if you've put a Pro-Q3 on multiple tracks, they can actually communicate with each other. So let's take a look down here under the analyzer. I could now see all tracks in my session with a Pro-Q3 applied to it. Right now we're on the hi-hat track with the EQ opened up. You can see here how I have one on each track that I have a Pro-Q3 on. We're gonna pay attention to the sync lead. So we have the sync lead clicked. Let's check out what happens when I press play. So you see right here, we've got this red area that lights up and this shows where the frequencies are clashing or masking. You may also have noticed two EQ curves. The first one that came in, the red one was our lead. The second one that came in, the white one was our hi-hat. So let's talk about using external side chaining and dynamic EQ to fix this. So with a recent update to the new Pro-Q3, so you actually have to update your Pro-Q3, there has been a new option making this very easy to do. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn side chain on, on the track that we're on, so on the hi-hat track, we're gonna side chain it to our sync lead right here. Now after we do that, you'll notice a new option show up. See this guy right here, and this is the external side chain button. To make sure you're doing this right, you have to have the side chain engaged over on the device, over to the left. So now that this is engaged, it's going to look at the audio from the sync lead since we have it selected. So I can go ahead and pull this down, and now you'll notice that it only reduces the volume in that area where the masking is while the external side chain is being triggered. Check this out. Notice that the second time with the growl lead, it does not engage the external side chain. So we're only getting this ducking while the sync lead is playing. 
Let's check this out one more time so we're clear. Now that we understand the main upgrade in Pro-Q3 and we understand what Dynamic EQ is, let's get into a couple of hidden features that you guys might have missed. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. So the first thing I wanna talk about is Pro-Q3's tilt function. And you can find that right here. And you can see it's actually engaged by default. But before we talk about that, I'd like to show you something pretty interesting. I've got an EQ8 lined up right down there below, and I've got a Pro-Q3 on the same exact track. This is my drum track, but it doesn't really matter. So visually look at the difference here, and then we'll talk about it. Mind blower, right? They look completely different, and I bet you a lot of you guys never even noticed that. So why do they look different? Well, to understand that, we need to understand pink noise and what pink noise is. So here's a picture of pink noise and white noise next to each other. By definition, pink noise is acoustical energy distribution uniformly by octave throughout the audio spectrum. Most people perceive pink noise as having uniform spectral power density, meaning the same apparent loudness at all frequencies. In pink noise, the total sound power in each octave is the same as the total sound power in the octave immediately above or below it. In this picture, you can see that the low frequencies actually have to sound louder than the high frequencies for it to come through the speakers as even. And here's the benefit of Pro-Q3's tilt function. With four built-in tilt modes, it allows us to access that much easier. 4.5 is where it's set as default. And I find that works pretty good for me, but go ahead and experiment, guys. So using this tilt function in Pro-Q3 actually makes evening out sounds much easier because this is how humans hear. Humans hearing systems frequency response is not linear, but logarithmic. In other words, we judge pitch increases by octaves, not by equal increments in frequency. This is why when we listen to white noise, it appears to us to increase in level by 3 dB every octave we go up. This is a picture that visually represents what I'm explaining. So if pink noise was even, this is what white noise would look like. This is why white noise is not the best for mixing and pink noise is much more preferred. So go ahead guys and use these Pro-Q3s with confidence because you'll be getting a nice even sound. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the auto gain function. So you find it right over here. And if auto gain is enabled, you'll see the A symbol lights up yellow. This is how you know it's on. So when it is on, Pro-Q will automatically compensate for an increase or loss in gain after EQing. Note that the applied makeup gain is an educated guess based on the current EQ settings and not a dynamic process based on actual measured levels. This is an amazing feature that I know most people just don't know about. This is great for helping to fit your sound into your mix and not worrying about your level increase or decrease. Let's use this on this bass stab to see if we can get it to sit in the mix a little better without affecting the volume. First, let me go ahead and solo the channel and really be extreme so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and reduce a hell of a lot here and hear what that sounds like. I've just removed 30 dB here and the volume actually hasn't changed. The tone did, but not the volume. Same thing if I increase. Though the tone changes, the volume never does. So let's go ahead and shape this guy in the mix in context. Without it, sounds super flat and boring. With it, we got that excitement that we want, we got the shape that we want, and we're not really worried about any volume increasing. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for what I wanted to show you in Pro-Q3. Remember, if you wanted more information on Pro-Q3 or just a cool place to go pick it up, don't forget to check out the Warp Academy website. I'll leave a link in the description. Other than that, if you found this interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel so you could be up to date on all the information. All right, see you guys.